Good morning, everybody. Good morning. On this Saturday morning where a lot of folks are somewhat reserved in attending church, our church is still open. We've got to keep it small. But those of you who are tuned in here today, I welcome those that have joined us in our Facebook social media. I hope that you're blessed by this message. Those that may have tuned us in later on on YouTube, when you hear it, I hope that you're blessed by this message. And that you can share this message with others. Today's message is a very important message because it's a message about decision or decisions. If you look at this little word up here, and it's got all these little ways that these letters have been formed, it, it kind of depicts which way am I going? What decision do I need to make? You know, uh, a, 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 a divine decision is in the lips of the king. His mouth should never err in his judgment. It comes from Proverbs. Well, what is true? What is a decision? A decision is a conclusion or a resolution reached after consideration. Never make a snap decision because you haven't considered everything. A decision is an action or a process of deciding something. A decision is a formal judgment. As we have up here in Proverbs 16.10, that we should not err in judgment. Mm -hmm. We should not err in judgment. Now choice, you've heard me preach about choice before. Choice is an act of selecting or making a decision when faced with two or more possibilities. And we have to make that choice. We always have at least two possibilities in order to make the decision. Otherwise, there's no decision that needs to be made. Like I said earlier, you're going down that road, you see a fork, and you're not quite sure which way to go. You have to make a decision. Hopefully, it's a decision that you make by turning it over to God and asking God for the best possible direction. People out there right now watching are making a decision to stay tuned in. Or they're going to make a decision to say, you know what, I don't need to hear about this today. And I pray for your lost souls. Mm. In Deuteronomy, mm. chapter 1 and verse 17, it reads, You shall show no partiality in judgment. Wow. You shall show no partiality in judgment. You shall hear the small and the great alike. You shall not fear man, for the judgment is God's. The case that is too hard for you, you shall bring to me, and I will hear it. That's pretty darn self-explanatory. Because this week I was praying for the courts to make the correct decision as it relates to the outcome of this country. The decision makers, the politicians, and the judges are all going to be held accountable to God. We're going to get through this. We're going to let God bring us through this. But they need to go back to the Bible. They need to go back to the roots and read what the Bible has to say about what their position really is. During the course of our lives, there are many major decisions that we have to make. The results of these decisions reflect on how we live our life. For example, we can choose to work very hard and provide for ourselves. We make that decision. And that decision would have been made to have a profession, a trade, a skill, or something we dedicated ourselves to in order to earn a living. At one time, the profession that I was in was no longer lucrative, was no longer needed because of how the country was, how the economy was. I made a decision not to sit back on my laurels and collect and live on the government. I made a decision to learn a new skill. I took a job that I absolutely hated, but I knew it was the right thing to do. God said, learn something new. And I made the decision to learn something new. We have the ability as a free country to make decisions for ourselves. However, there are many people out there 
who would rather make decision make a decision to live off the government and let the government make decisions for them. And these people, they don't care as long as they have everything for free. They don't give two hoots. They have decided not to work. They have become lazy. And they have become part of the norm of this country. Now I ask you, is this the kind of society that we want to live in? Years ago, people came to this country because of the opportunity we had. They made the decision to make a better life for themselves. Now they're coming to this country to live off the government and to drag us down. This year's election, for those of us who registered, mm, decided to vote on who they wanted to lead this country. Unfortunately, others in power made a decision to change election laws and swing the election in a direction that was not appealing to us they swang the, the, the election to make it appealing to those who want to live off the system. To those who want to have everything for free. To those who want to let the government choose for them how to live their life. Well, that's not a life for me, and I'm going to stand firm in my Christian belief that it's not going to affect how I think. The problem, as I see it today, is that people don't recognize God. They just don't recognize God. And without recognizing God, how can they expect to trust in Him? It's still our money, and God we trust. But if they don't recognize God, how are they going to put their trust in Him? Now there's a few scriptures out there that I found this week. Like the Bible helps to educate us about decision making. The first one you've heard many times over, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. The decision is trusting in the Lord. You have to make that decision to trust in Him. Then in James chapter 1 and verse 5, it was part of my devotional today, it talks about, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. So if we turn to God and we come to God, and God, give me the wisdom. Give me the knowledge that I need to help me discern to make the right decision in whatever it is I'm about to decide on. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be known to God. Now, if you don't ask God, you're not going to get. And people are all anxious. They're all in an uproar. They're all concerned about, you know, this, this, this COVID that's out there. And, and they're, they're, they're having mental states. They're, they're having suicides. Their addictions are going up. Because of their anxiety, they haven't turned to God because they don't know God. We need a strong Christians to help these people, to guide them, to give them baby steps, to not let them know the assurance of the message of the cross. If we would only reflect and rely on these few scriptures that I just read, then certainly we'd be able to make better decisions. Making the wrong decision will certainly have consequences that ultimately you will regret. Here's a classic. For example, driving while under the influence. You made that decision. And there's a DUI checkpoint. Or you got stopped by the cop. Or whatever the case. And they saw that you were drunk or whatever. And they do the sobriety test. And ultimately, you failed the test. You lose your license. Down the road, you regret the fact that you made that poor decision. Now, why did you make that poor decision? Because you were under the influence. Satan said, it's okay, you can drive that car. It's not a problem. What if you would have killed somebody? That would have been way worse than just losing your license. That's something you would have to live with the rest of your life for making a very poor decision. Many people have vices that cause them to make poor decisions. They decide maybe to spend their entire paycheck at a casino because they have a gambling addiction. Or they may decide to smoke cigarettes 
or they want to kill themselves, or they may decide to do drugs. All of these have outcomes that are not good. Satan leads them down that path, and while they're in that mode, they're not thinking about the outcome. They're thinking about themselves, how good it feels. It's all about me. I'm feeling good right now. I don't care about how it's going to be down the road. They're making bad decisions. Then on the other hand, there are those of us who make decisions wisely, especially when it comes to our money. Save for a rainy day is what I was told when I was a kid. Uh, perhaps make an investment. I was told that. But I did not lean on the Lord when I was making really good money. I did not lean on Him. I made very poor decisions about my money. And I had consequences as a net result of that. It was only after I made all these mistakes is when I started to come to the Lord in the ministry. And I realized how poorly I decided on certain facts in my life. And I'm living with those consequences. I accept those consequences. And I pray that the Lord will continue to guide me and lead me. So how can you make the best decision at all times? We've got to make them every day. First thing that comes to my mind... Obey God's Word. Obey God's Word. In the Bible, God clearly has expressed His will concerning life's matters. It should be our go-to book for answers. But most importantly, to come closer to God to build that relationship with Jesus Christ. Your decision to be obedient is required... Your decision in every matter should be to fully obey the Word of God. Now, if you're fully obeying the Word of God, you're going to understand His will for you, and you're going to make better decisions, because the Bible is your go-to book. And it may not be the decision that the evil one is dragging you somewhere else to do. Trust in the Lord to know that He's leading you in the right decision. Another thing to really know how to make the best decision is know the facts. Know the facts. In Luke chapter 4, verses 28 to 30, it reads, Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and you are not able to finish it, Everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying, This person began to build and wasn't able to finish. So in the Bible, it's a little, a little story there to think about. A, a fact of, you, you need to know everything. You need to have a clear first hand of the information before making a decision. You need all the details. I used to tell my daughter, give me details. I need details. There's an old proverb that says, look before you leap. And it's very appropriate all the time. Never take chances when making a crucial decision. Don't make that snap judgment. Also, when you're in that decision-making mode, weigh the consequences. Every decision you make has a consequence, be it good or be it bad. But every decision has a consequence. Without considering the consequence, you probably will make a bad decision. And if you make a bad decision, you want help. You come to people you want help, and you say, well, I, I, I wasn't thinking. That's a very common excuse today. They'll say, I, I just wasn't thinking. Now I want you to bail them out. Unfortunately, excuses cannot change consequences for poor decisions. It's just an excuse. Pray about it. If that decision can wait, you don't need to make it right this second. Pray about it. It's the most important step. Ask God to help and fill you to be guided by the Holy Spirit to go in the right direction and make the correct decision. 
And that decision, if you always say to yourself, is what I'm about to do, is it pleasing to God? If you ask yourself that question, or ask yourself the question, what would Jesus do? Keeping him in mind and keeping those couple of thoughts on your head are going to enable you to turn to him in prayer and ask him for, Lord, help me, direct me, guide me. Even though when that prayer is answered, it might be something that you thought you wanted to do something a little different, but God was telling you, he's knocking on your door saying, nope, you're going to do this. You have to follow where he's leading. If you pray without knowledge, you may make an emotionally oriented decision. You've got to have all the facts. When your prayers are informed, your decisions become more result-oriented. So when you're going to God in prayer, a lot of the things are already rolling around in your head. A lot of times you may have already concluded what you want to do. You go, oh yeah, God wants me to do that. When you make a decision, you should always be within the constraints of God's will. What it is that He wants to be done on earth. As, as well as in heaven. In James chapter 1 and verse 12, another key verse here, blessed is the one who preserves under trial. Having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Sometimes we are under trials. And we've made the decision to follow God. And we made the decision to be a strong Christian, but people are beating us up because we believe in God. Put this down because we believe in God. We have to withstand that. We have to preserve under these trials. And we're faced with trials every day. Every day there's a trial because Satan is trying to get us. Now, none of what I just said, or none of the, the scriptures that I just read, will mean anything to you unless you've made the single most important decision of your life. Now I'm talking to everybody out there. You know what that decision is that I'm in reference to. I can't hear you. Hmm. That decision would be the decision to turn your life over to Jesus Christ. That decision to be born again. That decision to accept the Holy Spirit as your guiding light. The decision to fully understand the message of the cross. So without making the decision to be a follower of Christ, how can you expect to make good decisions throughout your entire life? You can't. Now there's a magazine that Linda and I get. It's a Billy Graham publication. And it's called Decision. And on the cover this week, it also has In God We Trust. I didn't see this magazine until after I was inspired that this was going to be my topic. It was amazing how God works. And in there I was reading about an article called A Wake-Up Call for the Church. Hmm. A Wake-Up Call for the Church. We make the decision to get this publication to read it. I find it very inspiring. There's another publication out there that we get. It's called... Um, the Evangelist. The Evangelist. Thank you, dear. So the article this month in this one, A Wake Up Call for the Church. Churches need to make a decision to keep the doors open and stand for biblical truth. Government should not be allowed to control our churches and say we need to be closed. Why is it okay for people to be packed in an airplane? Why is it okay to be able to go out to a big box store and not allow people to attend the church? This is just wrong. Rules should be incorporated unilaterally. If you're going to shut it down, shut it down. Don't pick and choose what you're going to control. Everybody's drinking the Kool-Aid out there. Turn to God and make your own decision. It's just wrong. The church leaders need to trust God and decide to be open and preach the message of the cross. Be open even if you have a few people. 
broadcast the message. Reach out to the world. He's not shutting down technology. He's not stopping my voice from being heard out there. I feel very convicted about my decision to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And I don't care what people say about it. I know where I'm going to go when I pass on. I have a closing prayer. Lord, we all need your promises of hope. We need to remember who you are and all you've done and the work Jesus Christ did on the cross. We need to be, we need to be still and listen. To remember that you are our Savior, our place of safety, our unshakable foundation. Thank you. Please guide us this day, wherever you lead us, with the help of the Holy Spirit, we will follow. Amen. Amen. And in John 10, 27, it says, My sheep listen to my voice. Thank you, everybody.